So, Professor Döner, why is it important to measure minimal residual disease in uh, acute myeloid leukemia patients? So we, we have found um, in the recent years, or we have generated a number of um, data clearly showing that the MRD status, that means the level of measurable residual disease at defined time points during the treatment of our acute myeloid leukemia patients, but also in the follow-up period after the treatment, is highly predictive um, for the outcome of the patients. That means, um, the level of MRD or the MRD status clearly shows us the probability that a patient will have a relapse or will be in continuous complete remission. When do you have to measure MRD during the patient journey? So there are still a lot of um, um, studies going on to really find the optimal time point for MRD measurement. Um, on the one hand, we would like to start very early. We would like to have the information at a very early time point to um, make treatment decisions on the type of post-remission therapy. On the other hand, we do know that some markers do not disappear after two cycles, that there are still, um, that there are still a proportion of patients being positive. So this is clearly depending on the marker and we, would, we will not um, aim to over-treat these patients. So we are currently in our studies, we are evaluating different time points. It seems to be that after two cycles of intensive treatment, there is the first very informative time point, but also during um, other um, time points at the end of treatment and in the follow-up period, it is important to measure um, um, uh, residual disease. And which techniques can you use to measure this uh, parameter and which one is the best one? That's a question we are asking ourselves for many, many years now. So we first we do have um, the flow cytometry, multicolor flow cytometry that has been established in many countries for many years um, that allows to uh, monitor uh, the maturity of AML patients. But this is a technique that is really demanding. So I think this is restricted to very experienced labs. And then we have um, established for some of these molecular markers that are really good um, markers for monitoring MRD. Um, we have established quantitative PCR techniques. And for example, for the MPM1 mutation, we have really very um, valid assays, well-established assays that gives us a clear picture of the status and the risk of the patient for relapse at defined time points. But these markers are um, only available for 30 to 40 percent of our AML patients and we have to monitor uh, that this is our aim, at least all patients or almost all patients. And here, next generation sequencing techniques um, um, are playing an important role. And currently many groups are establishing gene panels that can be used um, for monitor as many genes um, that are present at the time of diagnosis in the patient. So um, I think this is still a mix of um, depending what genotype is um, identified at the time of diagnosis in the patient, but I hope in the future that we can cover um, MRD by using next generation sequencing technologies. So, Professor, is MRD measurement in uh, AML patients ready for prime time? I mean, is it a tool you can uh, use at the moment just in clinical trials or in uh, your everyday clinical practice as well? So at the moment, I think the majority um, of MRD assays is used in clinical trials because this is from a logistical point of view and also from a technical point of view um, demanding. So not every lab can do that in a decent time frame. Um, but I think um, with the development of the techniques and centralization of laboratories, it should be available to all patients. Um, and I hope that we are um, going in this direction and I hope that we will be able to monitor all our AML patients in the near future. And finally, we are here in Rome at the SO Italy annual conference. Which is for you the important of attending this meeting? So the, the, the importance um, of this meeting is um, to get an overview, an update on the latest findings in the different diseases. And this meeting here 
um, covers um, the whole hematology, hematology spectrum. This is one really imp important um, reason for me to come to get an update um, what is going on. And there's a lot of development because a lot of novel drugs um, are in clinical trials now. But another reason is also that it's really nice to uh, meet all these experts, to talk to young um, people that are um, in their career, in their development, doing research, um, to have a kind of networking um, and maybe also to find the one or the other collaboration.